the class. Thought I would uh, make a small video, talk to you a little bit about digital abstinence and uh, see if I can make a video uh, with, using Zoom this time. Um, I've got Chelsea working away right now trying to use Bongo, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, uh, you may have seen this photo on the front page of the Learn site. This is me uh, back when I had long hair and uh, was at the Carnival of the Future in Phoenix, Arizona. That's not my hair, of course you know that. And uh, that's Professor Ron Brolio from uh, University of Arizona who assisted me as a minister of the Digital Tabernacle. So we set up outside the big tent at the Carnival of the Future and we entreated people to lock away their devices and confess their digital sins. So people would actually come in and they would um, lock their devices in this disused Catholic tabernacle that I got off of eBay. We put a number on the back of their device and we'd give them a card, like a coat check with a number on it. It was a card of contemplation they would use to contemplate their digital sins. They'd go into the event and experience the event in an unmediated fashion. And that's what uh, Digital Tabernacle is all about. When they came back, after they were through with the event, which usually didn't last very long, people got pretty jittery, leaving their phones with a couple of creepy dudes. We would um, uh, have them confess their digital sins, which I've recorded. I've recorded hundreds of digital sins. And I would uh, spritz their phone with holy spray, actually as a screen cleaner, and wipe away their digital sins and send them off. Uh, after absolving their digital sins. Uh, it, was a, it was a pretty fun project, but I learned a lot about people's relationships to their phones as a result. There's the happy group right there. All right. While we we're doing all this, um, I was actually taking a photo of the participants. One photo every 30 seconds. People didn't know. I was using this life logging camera that I actually kind of dressed up to look like a cross. It, uh, you can see my, you know, my hacking skills there, uh, and posted all of these to the internet. So I was actually surveilling people while I was doing the project. So here are some sample digital sins that people have actually confessed. And there are two types of digital sins. One is kind of the run of the mill sin. You know, um, I don't email my mom often enough. I use my phone too often instead of spending time with my family, uh, stuff like that. Um, and then there's the, the sins where people feel like they're sinning against the digital. Like I hate foot Facebook or I signed up for Twitter and I never used it. So two different types of sins. One is like a run of the mill sin. I'm neglect neglecting my kid. I'm neglecting my mom. I'm vain. I take too many selfies. Or there is the, the kind of sin that shows that people feel pressure to use their devices. And if they don't, then they're sinning somehow. I'm more interested in uh, these big sins. These are, these are mortal sins. So these are mortal sinners in the tech community. So this is Lauren Brichter. He invented the pull to refresh action on Twitter that's now pretty universal on a lot of different apps. He invented it quite simply just to get people to check their phones. It's kind of like pulling the lever on a slot machine. And he said a few years ago, now I've spent many hours and weeks and months and years thinking about whether anything I've done has made a net positive impact on society or humanity at all. So he's having a bit of a conscience of crisis, uh, crisis of conscience. James Willis from Google said, Google is the largest, most standardized, and most centralized form of attentional control in human history. We talk more about attention in this class. And then Tremath Paliopidia said, I feel tremendous guilt. I think of the deep recesses of our minds. We kind of knew something bad could happen. So. Again, a Facebook person this time saying he feels guilty for what they did at Facebook, which is basically get people hooked. And um, these are some, you know, high ranking digital sinners who have confessed their mortal digital sins, uh, which is really just trying to get people addicted to devices. And the most famous person, we'll be looking at him later this term, in this area, the famous sinner, I've written an article about him in the Globe and Mail, Tristan Harris, who said, Hippocratic oath for software designers to stop the exploitation of people's psychological vulnerabilities. And that's the big issue here, is how are these devices and apps, how is technology exploiting people's psychological vulnerabilities? I think we're gonna hear a lot more about that as this course progresses. Um, it's an article I read, I wrote, sorry, about Tristan Harris. And um, I, I think I talk a little bit about the digital tabernacle in this article. You can go ahead and read that if you want. 
and um, in the meantime, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to stop the screen sharing and uh, I'm going to stop the recording and uh, I'll continue this another time.